From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. We have a Facebook page called Here's Where It Gets Crazy, where a lot of our fellow listeners share ideas, uh, follow up with questions, uh, post some of the dankest memes on the internet as determined arbitrarily by us. Uh, and thanks to our pal Brett G. Brett, I hope you're listening. Uh, we owe you one. Thanks to you, Brett, we learned the story of a guy named Marcus Hutchins. So, Marcus Hutchins was, uh, he had his online handle was malware tech, all one word. And he's what people outside of the InfoSec community would just call a hacker. Uh, he is, <laughs> he's a pretty young dude. He was born in 1994. And if you have heard of him, you have almost certainly heard of him due to uh, a Wired article that uh, came out in 2020, written by Andy Greenberg. Let me just give you the headline here. The Confessions of Marcus Hutchins, the hacker who saved the internet. At the tender age of 22, this guy put a stop to the worst cyber attack the entire planet had ever experienced up to that point. And then Uncle Sam arrested him. <laughs> so he he's fine now he's he's fine now but let's let's talk about what happened so there was a ransom attack back in 2017 called WannaCry and or ransomware I should say ransomware is where some malicious actor takes over your computer and demands payment or in some cases may demand compromising photos or information with the idea being that if you pay up this ransom, whatever it is, then you will regain control of your machine. It's a nasty business to find yourself in. Obviously, it's illegal. But before 2017, no one had taken it to the scale of WannaCry. This was a crypto worm. This, Whenever we talk about this stuff, it reminds me of that, uh, that excellent film, Hackers with Angelina Jolie and who else was in there? The bad guy was on a skateboard. Yeah, what was his name? The dude that was also in, in Scream. Scream. Yeah. Uh, which is, oh gosh, Matthew Lillard. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's Out of that. left field. Nicely done. Also in Scooby-Doo, sure. which I think is his, also true. Is the, his real passion project. Well, this is like a real-life hacker story because WannaCry used an exploit that existed in Windows at the time because WannaCry used an exploit in Microsoft Windows Server Messenger Block. This allowed it to get into so many computers that were using Windows. It started on, on the 12th of May and people believe that it started in North Korea and then in the space of 24 hours, it spread to more than 230,000 computers in 150 countries. So it traveled around the world, quite literally, in the space of a day. And you could only unlock this computer, if it was infected, by sending Bitcoin to this anonymous account. On the same day this occurs, Hutchins gets wind of it. And he was on vacation at the time, but this guy is so driven, he's just in his bedroom and he starts reverse engineering the code and he starts, you know, he's doing forensics at this point. And, and he figures out that the malware has this weird looking domain name that it's tied to. So he thinks it could be part of a botnet at first, but then he finds out, Hey, hello, the domain name is not registered. So he registers the domain and then he sets up servers to act as honeypots and it allows them to sort of track the infected computers. This is all happening very quickly. And while he's doing this, the worm is continuing to spread. And 
while it was spreading, other people, of course, are panicking across the planet. And they look into this and they find that Hutchins had had registered this domain name. And because of how quickly he did it, he was able to cut off the flow of this world eating ransomware. And he was working with a company called Cryptos Logic. They buddied up with the National Cybersecurity Center in the United Kingdom. And they spent the next days, you know, giving them some TLC to those honeypot servers to protect them against a lot of DDoS, distributed denial of service attacks. And then France, or some cybersecurity researchers based in France, found a way to unlock and decrypt those infected computers without giving up the Bitcoin. And this is when things actually start to go wrong for this poor guy. Like, so far, he's a hero, right? He's like, this is god-tier level white hat hacking. Uh, he is, he's like, he's saving state-level actors at this point. As a 22-year-old in his bedroom, this feels like it'd be an amazing, an amazing film, right? But, yeah, but... Uh, the it, it would i honestly think it would be an amazing film but that's because of what happens next so everybody at first is goo goo gaga over this guy they're singing his praises this uh this mysterious hutchins kid you know what i mean he's the he is the new he's like the mickey mantle of good hackers now or the i i guess lebron james of good hackers that sports reference does work. Okay, I had to check. Uh, so he uh, <laughs> he eventually um, he eventually real comes under the scrutiny of the press, which doesn't play around, and they figure out his government name, malware tech. They find is actually this Marcus Hutchins kid. He tried to avoid the press, but especially tabloids in the United Kingdom, like the Daily Mail and the Sun, they're notorious for like getting into people's lives. Uh, they, some of these tabloids published his government name and his address. They did the print version of doxing him. And he did try to do one interview to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm not a hero. We don't have to talk about anything malware tech may have done in the past. Let's just be happy that we haven't been eaten by this worm virus. Uh, and he goes to DEFCON and this is in 2017. And this is, this is interesting because guys, we used to go to CES, the consumer electronic showcase that was held in Las Vegas. And sometimes I, I don't know if you guys remember it. Sometimes they would overlap and you would have to try to figure out like, is this someone who's excited about the new Toyota 3d audio technology or are they setting up fake uh, Wi-Fi hotspots to grab people's, you know, banking info just for sure. Fun. Yeah. It seems like um, a great confluence, right? <laughs> it does. It seems like there, have, I bet you there have been some very fascinating late night conversations in casinos, right? It's, it, it's cool stuff. Uh, and so Hutchins is kind of at this point, he's like a celebrity and he goes to DEFCON where he is lauded, of course, as a hero. But the streets are watching and the alphabet's watching too. And so he's getting ready to go back to England from DEFCON on August 3rd, 2017. And I'm starting to think I might have been at CES then. Or one of us may have been. I may have been. Anyway, so he's arrested on six federal hacking charges uh, for creating and spreading another thing, a kind of banking malware called Kronos. Because why was he so good at stopping WannaCry? Because he knows how to build this stuff. <laughs> and he's done it before. So he's like, so it makes sense that he said, I'm not a hero. He probably didn't want people to figure out that he had been involved in these things. They found that he had been selling this software and was franchising it. They found uh, some of the conversations he had had with colleagues. And he 
eventually says, okay, he got me. He confesses while he's questioned in jail in Vegas. And then he alerts some compatriots who spread the word, almost like a virus, you could say. And people started going nuts. A lot of folks got came together to help him make bail. Uh, and sadly, or hilariously enough, when they were crowdsourcing this, some of the money to make bail for him did come from like stolen credit cards and Bitcoin. So somebody probably used some malware to help get this guy out. Uh, but people were concerned that like a lot of conspiracy theories started to spread. And people were saying, you know, the FBI locked up Hutchins because the FBI was actually behind, you know, WannaCry. And we talked, I, I could swear we talked about WannaCry back in the day when it came Definitely. out, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a very striking name. It's hard to forget that one. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't remember. I think it was in a larger episode about hacks. Or, you know what, Matt? I think it was you maybe brought it as a uh, strange news uh, segment. Maybe. Because that was it's been a while, but I, I just seem to associate Want to Cry with you for some reason. But okay. uh, yeah, I feel No, like that's just my disposition, I think. You just make me want to cry <laughs> out of joy. <laughs> I feel like we had, I, I know we had definitely talked about it, but uh, listeners, remind us, <laughs> can you help us out? Remind us whether or not we did an episode on this. Uh, it's a fascinating story, and it's instructive because from there we start to go into the realm of true crime and backroom dealings. Uh, it's It's weird because he gets barred from leaving the country because he's part of an ongoing investigation. So other people in the community help find him a temporary place to live. He lives in L.A. for a while. He gets arraigned. He pleads not guilty. He's put under house arrest, and then he gets curfew limits and uh, all these other things. They go hard on him for the first few months. But he had definitely decided to plead not guilty as a way of making a making the way for a plea bargain with the FBI uh, and the FBI was negotiating with him. They wanted him to flip on a couple of other, other hackers or other activities. And they said, look, if you play ball with us, we'll reduce your sentence. You'll still, you'll still get in trouble, right? You'll still have consequences, but none of those will be prison time. And that's a very tempting offer to make somebody. Uh, so he said, look, I'm not going to, play ball with this and they responded by saying okay we're gonna add four more charges <laughs> to the docket for you buddy and this was you know in retaliation uh for him not playing ball fast forward 2019 he pleads guilty to there's a total of 10 charges now he pleads guilty to two and his statement is basically chalking this up to being a dumb kid who was very intelligent and had a lot of time on his hands. Uh, he eventually got sentenced to time served because he'd been on house arrest and, and uh, one year of supervised release. And the judge who made this decision could have given him five years in the clink and $2,500,000 in fines just for those two charges. But the judge said, you know, you, he's doing the right thing. Uh, and so we're not going to put him under the jail. And uh, this is happening now. I, I think as we record, he is hopefully back in the UK. He did say he liked LA, but he is uh, hopefully back in the UK. And human beings are rarely one thing. One person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. And you might be a hero or a villain, depending on the perspective of the people with whom you interact in this case, I wanted to ask you guys and our, our fellow listeners kind of uh, an interesting thing that Brett brought to us with this story. Can we say this guy is a hero? I think we can. I think he uh, would say he did a heroic thing. He did. Yes, he did. Well, he did a difficult thing and it provided a lot of good, right? By, by neutralizing the wanna cry. Uh, malware. If you read the the Wired article 
from Andy Greenberg, the Confessions of Marcus Hutchins, the hacker who saved the internet, it, the detail in there about some of the things he did as a teenager. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like Marcus knew he was doing some shady stuff that wasn't going to turn out well for a lot of other people that weren't him. And he was getting paid for it. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about this yet. <laughs> but then again, if he had not, if he had not committed those acts, if he didn't have that expertise, then WannaCry would have continued to sweep like biblical fire across the planet. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Would have absolutely ravaged the internet. Um, we see this a lot, though, guys. I mean, we see examples of I forget what it was. Gosh, it was something we talked about very recently where somebody saw some source code um, and realized something was not protected. Like, 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 like looking at some source code, um, realized that some Internet service or site or something was was very, very, very unprotected and then reported it and then got in trouble for hacking. But all they really did was look at the source code. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job of uh, remembering exactly what this is. But this is a thing that happens relatively frequently, which makes uh, people with internet expertise like this who could do good very reticent to report anything to anybody uh, of, um, of, uh, in, a, in a position of authority, which I understand why, uh, because things like this happen. 